Hello students, so yesterday I told you that I am giving you an introduction of unit number 4. This is for recording, not for PPT. Unit number 4 is entitled Functional Areas of Information Systems. So yesterday I told you that information systems have to be designed appropriately for each level of management. There are various levels of management in different organizations. Some are tall organizations, some are flat organizations. But minimum three levels are there in each and every organization. These are top level, middle level, junior level. Top level is at the top of the pyramid that has the smallest number of executives. Middle level is below that and at the bottom we have the junior managers by number they are the largest they run the operations they do the transactions middle level managers they control they direct and they report and top level managers they are basically given the duty of strategic management so, since their functions are different, the information systems which are required to be designed for them will also be different. For example, when we are talking about junior managers or middle managers, they may be using a CRM software where they could enroll a customer or keep tab on the transactions of the customers or amounts due from the customer and so on. But when we come to the topmost level, they are more concerned with strategy formulation. For strategy formulation, they may have to get data which is not only internal to the organization, but also external data. So those systems which are for topmost levels, they are generally called executive information systems, like that. For each level of management, the information systems have also to be designed appropriately. At middle level, you may need a management information system or a decision support system. At topmost level, an executive information system. And maybe at the junior most level, you may require something like AutoCAD, which helps you to design a product or design a circuit for an electrical product, something like that. Then we come to the information systems for various functional areas. Depending on the business that you are in, depending on your business profile, the functions also can be different from one organization to other. However, the basic functions of management basic five functions of management namely finance marketing human resource management operations management and supply chain management are universal they are in every organization and no organization small or large in any sector of the economy can operate without them so for these functional areas also, individual functional information systems are needed. The systems which are designed for individual functions like finance, marketing, etc. It becomes very necessary for them to share data with one another. Because these are not totally independent silos. They are not watertight compartments. They are compartments which are in the same organization and we need synergy among, among them. Synergy can never happen unless there is scope for collaboration and sharing of data. Within the organization, there is no competition. Within the organization, what I need is collaboration cooperation so our information systems which are for various functional areas 
they have to not only support those functions they have to provide opportunities for managers to interact cooperate collaborate share data share drawings share spreadsheets share insights into data obtained through data mining share data from decision support systems share data through a share point server all these things are required in functional systems now these functional systems when they work together in fact they become an enterprise package this enterprise package is the umbrella term which serves all the functions of an organization these packages are actually erp packages the full form of erp is note down enterprise resource planning so enterprise resource planning softwares enterprise resource planning packages they are the enterprise applications which contain separate modules these modules are devoted to individual functional areas but there is a possibility of sharing the data and collaboration right so these enterprise resource planning systems today they are ubiquitous you think of an organization like bharat heavy electrical limited bhl a multi plant organization in india and having offices abroad or you think of a company like ola ola caps or uber caps enterprise resource planning software packages are found in all these organizations you will be surprised to know students that in the world there are thousands of erp packages and i am not exaggerating by saying the word like thousands is not no exaggeration really there are thousands of packages available within our city of hyderabad there are at least half a dozen firms who claim to have their own software packages one firm is in begumpet i know another is in gachibauli so this is an area which is a very hot area in software development out of these thousands of packages which are existing in the market the largest market share is enjoyed by only one erp package and the name of that is sap sap originally sap was an abbreviation for systems applications and packages but today nobody refers to sap with that long name today sap itself is a name of the company and name of their software package sap is owned by a german company and today it is called sap ag ag is equivalent to what we call limited company in india but ag doesn't refer to only german companies since germany is a part of the european union now britain is not a part of european union great britain has come out after brexit but germany france italy greece scandinavian countries sweden norway switzerland they continue to be in the european union so germany is a part of the european union in european union the abbreviation used is ag which is equivalent to what we call limited company in india so sap ag is the european company 
which supports and markets the SAP ERP package. The market share of SAP among all the ERP packages in the world is a staggering 67 percent. So two thirds of the market is cornered by them. I know dozens of companies in India and dozens of companies in Hyderabad who are using SAP. SAP is the single market leader for ERP packages. You will be perhaps thinking why I am not mentioning other great companies like Microsoft are they not in this business? Yes, they are. Microsoft is also into ERP. Oracle Manufacturing is also into ERP. They also have their ERP packages. But none of them comes even close to the market share of SAP. The number one market leader in ERP products is SAP. And from your point of view as students, I would like to tell you something. Your MBA degree will get you a salary of something like how much? Say 30,000 max after you complete your MBA. If you are very lucky, maybe you may go up to 40. But if along with MBA, you also do a certification in SAP in one or two modules. Your salary jumps straight away three times. So you should be able to get something like about one lakh if you have done SAP certification also. And all these SAP certifications do not require that you have to take admission in any university. No university gives you that certification. The certification is given directly by SAP AG. The coaching is online. If you are confident, you can learn it yourself. It takes more time or you can go to a training provider and they will provide you training. It takes about three to six months of dedicated effort to get SAP certification. Assume that you are doing MBA with finance specialization. You could think of SAP F-I-N-C-O. F-I stands for finance. C-O stands for control. That is the hottest module in the entire SAP package. Salaries will be very high, even more than one. If you have done specialization in marketing, you could think of SAP CRM or SAP sales and distribution. And that again increases your market value enormously, but not as much as FIE and CO. FIE and CO is the topmost. CRM and sales and distribution are only at the second place. Or you could go for a still lower level of certification, say for supply chain management or warehousing management, something like that. But whatever SAP certification you take, it is a feather in your cap. Not just a peacock feather, I mean not just a pigeon feather, but a peacock feather. Because it increases your market value very high. So, SAP has got all the modules which an enterprise can require. Finance is there, manufacturing is there, project planning is there, services management is there, human resource management is there, quality management is also there. And there are modules which deal with country specific requirements. Country specific requirements are like for India, 
there may be certain customs rules certain gst rules certain rules required for e way bill for movement of trucks by road which will not be applicable in any other country they are only in india so country specific modules are also available which help you to do those things according to the rules and regulations of our country that module which is country specific for india will obviously not work in pakistan it won't work in bangladesh or sri lanka also but it is country specific only for india for their country they have to buy the module which is specific to their country's rules so like that sap works sap is the dominant market player as i mentioned to you just now however there are other players also in the market i must mention two more who are also global players in the erp sphere one is yes microsoft excel microsoft has a very good erp package and it is called microsoft dynamics 365 the number 365 does it ring a bell in your mind now you must have heard it for another microsoft product also microsoft office 365 that's called microsoft office 365 which gives you all the parts of microsoft office word excel powerpoint one note access it doesn't give because microsoft believes that if you want really a relational database management system you should go for my sql server and put it on the sharepoint so there you can work on the databases but these four or five most popular parts of microsoft office they are available as microsoft office 365 it is a subscription model that means annually you have to pay some amount once you pay that you don't need to install anything of microsoft office in your laptop you can work online not only you can work online if you have a doubt whether my internet will be working all the time or not some of the files you can give the setting as make available offline so those files will be available for you to work on even when your internet connectivity is disrupted Office 365 is a subscription model. I told you just now. Your data and the app itself, they are located in the cloud in some server. Similarly, Microsoft Dynamics 365 is also a cloud-based subscription model. So you are using software as a service. S A A S S A A S is the abbreviation for software as a service this is different from infrastructure as a service I A A S or platform as a service P A A S those models are also available for example if you want to develop and host a cloud based application developed by you hosted by you maintained by you you do it on microsoft azure azure is not software as a service that is infrastructure as a service or platform as a service but microsoft office 365 and also microsoft dynamics 365 they work on the principle of software as a service so you have to pay a subscription what is the subscription based on well two things one the data storage that you need 
organizations need very large storage of data individuals also require very large data nowadays something like half a tb or something but organizations require thousands of tbs so that storage space you have to pay for and secondly you have to pay for the transactions and data traffic how many transactions and how much total total data uploaded and downloaded based on that your subscription changes very similar to your mobile data subscription more data you use more you have to pay less you have to pay less similarly that also works microsoft dynamics 365 now i told you is a cloud based subscription model but it was not always like that earlier these were desktop applications and among the desktop applications microsoft erp had several variants several variants these variants had very beautiful names like it was called microsoft zapta zapta is spelled as a x a p t a abbreviation a x another variant was microsoft navision abbreviation n a v another was microsoft crm another was microsoft salesforce salesforce was basically for managing the travel and operations of the sales people when they are scheduling meetings with the customers when are they going to travel where do they travel how do they travel in such a way that traveling time is minimized and the maximum maximum time is spent in front of the customer so how do we optimize that all these things were done through microsoft salesforce and we had another good variant called microsoft great plains but after the subscription model came these things became obsolete so today if you still use the name zapta or the abbreviation ax it is more like focused on finance and operations however if you use microsoft crm it is more focused on sales customer data customer interactions customer support customer transactions things like that and when you talk of microsoft navision now it is more focused on things like things like you know the central business component of the erp so that's how the arrival of the subscription model dynamics 365 has very drastically changed the microsoft erp package very similar to what has happened to microsoft office till about 10 years ago everybody was installing microsoft office in their laptops and desktops updating it regularly and struggling with it today nobody does that everything is available through office 365 through subscription so similar way dynamics also works like that <clears throat> one more passing remark i would like to tell you how did these names originally come zapta navision great plains surprising all are from the same company but why so many names came well the reason was that these were not originally microsoft products they were products of some other smaller companies those smaller companies were acquired by microsoft acquired means microsoft paid for them so those companies gave their products with full development and support package rights to microsoft that's how 
originally zapta navision great plains they became microsoft desktop erp versions and later when dynamics 365 came everything went and merged into that so the second dominant player well i am not very sure whether microsoft is really the second or third or what but one of the dominant players after sap is microsoft and another dominant player is oracle oracle also has an erp package the erp package of oracle is called oracle manufacturing however it's a misleading name because oracle manufacturing is not only for manufacturing it's a full fledged erp package and in fact one of the modules of oracle manufacturing which is called wms or warehouse management system is supposed to be the best among all the erps in the world it provides very great interface <coughs> very user friendly <coughs> and provides facilities like facilities like uh, uh, rotation of the trucks in such a way that idle time is minimized and uh, that kind of optimization uh, algorithms are built into oracle warehouse management system so these are all the enterprise packages which help you to manage an entire enterprise and all its functions efficiently and effectively without sacrificing the sharing of data so collaboration remains without collaboration among functions and among executives and managers no organization can function be very clear about it you may specialize in any field when you are studying but when you go to an organization you are not going to work in a watertight compartment isolated from anyone everyone else in that company you will have to network with them there is a good proverb in management which says your net worth depends on your network more networking the more is your net worth as an individual okay so these packages are such that they help you to manage the entire enterprise but in all these names no indian name was mentioned i'm sure you must be thinking what are indians doing yes there are indian companies also in this field and among the indian companies two names are very prominent very prominent one is zoho z o h zoho is a company which was started by a young man from tamil nadu i don't remember his name right now you can google it you will know who started zoho zoho has its own subscription model cloud based erp package and they have a global presence now they are not limited to only tamil nadu or to india they are available in practically every metro of the world in india their office is in gachibauli they operate from gachibauli in hyderabad and uh, this particular gentleman the person from tamil nadu who started this it was a small startup but today it is a global multinational company it has become very popular and uh, it provides all the services which you can expect from a full fledged erp package like sap 
and the second company which i would like to mention is another come come inside and ask srinivas principal is in the next room actually he might have gone somewhere so second indian company which i would like to mention in this area is the well known tcs tata consultancy services and tata consultancy services has their own erp package the name of the package is ion i o n but when you write ion i will be small o n n will be capital that is their brand name so they have designed their brand name like that small i followed by o and n capital ion is the brand of erp by tcs and uh, now ion is also getting quite popular in india and abroad if you have gone to many patna many time right on the main road right on the main road you can find a training academy which provides training on ion like that there are several training partners for ion in different cities who provide training on ion erp package and uh, the third great company which uh, is also into ramco marshall but nowhere to compare with tcs and zoho is ramco 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 was originally a cement manufacturing company shocking right a cement manufacturing company based in tamil nadu and they diversified into software and they created an erp package ramco marshall so that is also an indian erp package which is a prominent name at least in the among the indian entrepreneurs and uh, lastly i would like to mention one small name another small name is tally tally yes it is the same tally which is the accounting package also tally up to version 8 was just an accounting package you could use it for entering your vouchers creating your trial balance asking for a profit and loss account or creating your balance sheet on any day of the year tally was meant only for that but when tally version 9.0 came then they added many other functionalities in that and they said tally 9.0 will now be an erp so tally 9.0 which was originally just an accounting package became a quite economical erp package but its popularity is nowhere near zoho or nowhere near ion of tcs so like that uh, i said in the right in the beginning na thousands of erp packages are there so these are the prominent names which i have mentioned i hope you will remember them sap microsoft dynamics 365 oracle manufacturing zoho and uh, tcs ion etc so these are the erp packages which we are talking about then in your syllabus there is uh, a term used called cpfr in unit number 4 cpfr is not erp you may note down the full form of cpfr the full form of cpfr is collaboration planning forecasting and replenishment collaboration collaborative collaboration planning 
forecasting and replenishment so it's a very specific package which is focused on these four activities one activity is collaboration collaboration within the organization and also collaboration with our business associates like retailers distributors etc then planning planning is a universal function everyone needs it so planning also can be done through cpfr packages <coughs> and uh, forecasting especially this is a very strong tool for forecasting of sales so depending upon the trends of sales in the current year in the previous years in the previous planning periods it helps you to forecast the sales in the next few months or next quarter and all that and the last part of cpfr is replenishment now what is replenishment in the area of retailing replenishment is a very important activity now look at this example let's say i am manufacturing a product and that product is being sold through malls malls are my outlets so in malls what happens there are shelves of all the products between shelves there is a walking space called oil and then customers they enter the mall they walk through the aisles between the shelves they keep on picking up whatever they need dropping in the shopping basket shopping cart then they go to the checkout point and they pay and go out this is the activity in the mall at the retail outlet now if my brand is in stock out that means my branded product is not on the right shelf at the right time what is the result of that the customer immediately picks up my competitor's products let's say my product is a particular shampoo sun silk that is not available there are other shampoos also l'oreal also makes a shampoo so they may pick up that once that happens the danger is the customer may get hooked to my competitors products so i lose sales and i also lose chance of selling to that customer in future also this is the danger this can be avoided by proactive replenishment i keep monitoring the stock at the retail point continuously and then as soon as i find that the stock is somewhat low i replenish the stock i am not doing this for benefit of the retailer i am doing this for benefit of my own company so it's an important activity in marketing in retailing this becomes an important activity so cpfr packages are those packages which help you to do these four activities quite efficiently they help you to avoid what is called in supply chain management the bull whip effect which leads to sometimes overstocking sometimes understocking both can be avoided when we use a cpfr package so today's class we will